Hey, what's up? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. High Town, brand new show from Stars. Monica Raymond is one of the stars of it. How are you? Hi, how you doing? I'm doing really well. I've been reading about the show for a while. Haven't checked it out yet, but pretty excited about it on a number of different levels, and I'm sure you are too. So what was it like jumping into this one and exploring a, a bunch of really important issues here? Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, it's a, it's a fun ride on High Town. It's a crime drama. It's centered around a, a murder investigation that takes place in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Um, and I play Jackie Quinones, who's this like hardcore partying, messy, rough around the edges girl, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Um, and she, you start seeing her struggle with her sobriety, and she comes across this dead body that washes up on the beach, and then finds herself completely immersed in you know, finding out who this girl's killer was. How much did you know about P-Town and the Cape before you started doing this? I didn't know anything. I mean, I had heard of P-Town as sort of like this place of pride and uh, obviously it's an LGBTQ, um, you know, haven, but I had never been to Cape Cod. I heard that people are really lovely and it's super <laughs> inclusive, but that was my first time being there. Yeah, and it's just like you have this, like it says in the trailer, it's like the Shangri-La of what's going on in P-Town, and then also this really terrible, awful thing happening. So what was it like for you guys to kind of parse through both those things, where it's like, we're going to have this wonderful world existing, but also these terrible, awful things can happen at the same time? Yeah, um, it's it, it's strange, you know, having that kind of dichotomy that you have to to learn how to navigate as a, as a character from there what's interesting about towns like this is that, you know, the tourists have one experience of a town and the culture. Um, and then once everybody goes to bed or after the peak season, then you're left with sort of the underbelly of the town. You realize sort of the danger and the violence that happens. It's, it's all wrapped up in this drug, this drug trade, you know, right now it's, it's such a, a terrible topic for so many people in this country, uh, the opioid epidemic and, you know, heroin and fentanyl, and um, you see how pervasive it is and uh, how, how many lives it destroys. I think one of the cool things about the industry is that we're seeing shows like this, and then also we're seeing really interesting roles. So like your role in particular, like that was just a man's role, like not that long ago. And it's like, we're totally flipping it up. It's on its head here. So how cool is it to jump into those waters with this role? It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's about time, right? It's about time, yeah. yeah. And what's great about this show is, um, you know, ha being able to tackle something that is traditionally more of a male storyline, but is played by a woman. I, I get to provide a female's perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just incredibly nuanced and, and different um, and engaging. So it's, it's really freeing, too, to be able to play a character who who you know we don't we would judge normally if it was a woman but now in the context of high town it's just like this normalized circumstance where that she's in so it's very empowering and, and um it's it's exciting to see that there's space for that it's nice when you don't judge automatically in, in your first reaction to something that that makes life a little bit easier right yeah amen <laughs> So I'm a big fan of James uh, Badgedale, and I know working with him was definitely a treat. What was some of the coolest parts of doing that? Oh man, he's he's just a treasure. He really is. He's he's an amazing guy. Um, we work really well together because we both respect the art of collaboration. We both really trusted each other, and we had some things in common that we got to share on a personal basis. And so working together was like very natural and organic, but also kind of uh, scary in a good way because he's so compelling. You don't know what he's going to do. And that's what you want as an actor to have in an acting partner to try to keep things alive and bubbling and hopefully unpredictable. You've been on a bunch of different shows and obviously being one of the stars of this show, there's a different level of responsibility. Who are some people that you've worked with in the past that really commanded themselves well on a set and really just knew how to engage others and lead others to the best content? Uh, the first person that comes to mind is Eamon Walker. Eamon Walker plays uh, Chief Bowden on Chicago Fire. You've also seen him in Cadillac Records. He was the lead on Oz. He's been around. And he's somebody who is basically a father figure to me in my actual life. Um, and the way he composes and leads a set is unrivaled. He has a certain grace and sophistication but also knows how to have fun and not take life too seriously. So I learned a lot from him. 
about the good wife for here on CBS? What do you remember about that experience? Oh man, I think uh, Matt Zukri, right? And Archie Punjabi, that's who I worked with mostly. Um, and it was super fun. We felt, I felt like they were my friends right away. For some reason we really got along well. And so we like, we went out to a couple lunches, got a couple drinks and uh, they were really just welcoming and um, laid back. That was my experience. So I've talked to a few people that went to Juilliard, so I need to hear your audition story and you know your favorite experiences from uh, that whole deal. I have to ask, who did you talk to? Let's see, uh, Brandon Michael Hall is uh, one guy I talked to you. And oh, man, uh, David Denman, who was uh, right from The Office, he went to Juilliard as well. I think those are the two that are jumping to mind right now. Well, cool. yeah, it's, it's so funny because it's such a small community. Yeah. You know, there's 18 or 20 kids who graduate from that class that, that get in it's like a two percent acceptance rate or something stupid but um it was crazy man like i was telling somebody else i'll never do anything as difficult as <laughs> surviving truly are because they kick your ass uh, and they're not afraid the teachers there will tell you what you need to work on they're not afraid to be extremely honest so you learn how to build a thick skin there and of course you come out with amazing training too yeah, it's a good way to get going in what can be a really tough industry at times with lots of up and downs. So they, they know what they're doing there. <laughs> when you think about your career, what have been some of the other big moments for you? Because like we talked about a couple of the different things, but what, what are you proudest of so far? Um, you know, I started directing the past few years, and that's something that I'm, I'm very proud of. Um, most recently, I directed the, uh, what happened to be the season, finale, the season finale of FBI. Um, it was just when the pandemic was breaking and everything started shutting down. And my episode ended up being the finale. I'm really proud of that. And um, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot about myself and my work. And so I think for right now, I'm going to say that. Good place to end. Monica, thanks for hanging out. Best of luck. Stay safe. We'll talk to you down the road, right? Too. Take care.